After what unfolded in game one, the Lakers weren't about to drop another one to the Suns. It wasn't easy, but they did manage to escape with a 109-102 victory. Anthony Davis, Dennis Schroeder, LeBron all improving on their game one performances. Now, in regards to the Suns, keep in mind Chris Paul, uh, his shoulder there is a little concerning, limited to just 23 minutes, had only six points. Back to the Lakers and more specifically Anthony Davis. He was called out by several of our own analysts after game one, and he did take responsibility for that loss. He then went on to lead LA game two with 34 points, 10 boards, and seven assists. Welcome in NBA champ Rip Hamilton to talk all things NBA and the playoffs. Rip, so both you and Avery Johnson called out AD after game one. I would like to believe he was watching AQ, HQ. He was listening to you guys. Uh, but regardless, this is a big win for the Lakers in game two. Yes, it was a huge game, Amanda. First of all, I like the outfit, black on black. That's a nice little combination right you there. You match all the time. I love this. I love the color coronation, but uh, AD came out aggressive. I thought that in game one, it, he was kind of like uh, allergic to the paint. Uh, shot a lot of shots from the perimeter, didn't get to the basket. And the Lakers need him to dominate the paint. Uh, when they added Andre Drummond uh, to that roster, now this team is, uh, it was already the most physical team in the M NBA, but this just added to that. Uh, and I thought AD did a great job of establishing himself on the low block, getting easy baskets, and his teammates found him. I thought that uh, Dennis Schroeder's play out on the floor with just keeping guys off balance on the perimeter, allow uh, AD to roam on the, uh, on the perimeter, knocking down wide open threes and putting him in pick and roll situations with LeBron James. And when LeBron's knocking down the jump shot, it makes the roll a lot more better for Anthony Davis. So I just thought he was huge. He took on the challenge. That's what great players do. You might have one bad game, but you always respond the next game. And I felt, felt as though the AD came and responded. Hey, really quickly, in regards to Chris Paul's shoulder, uh, someone on our staff pointed it looks like he was playing with one arm, took just five shots, scored six, only 23 minutes. Uh, if this is a problem moving forward, which it looks like it might be, how bad potentially is this for the Suns? It's, it's, it's huge. I think all their, like, their chance of getting through the first round depends on Chris Paul's shoulder. I mean, he's been the catalyst for this ball club all season long. Uh, could have been an MV, MVP. Top, he could have been MVP this year, in, in my opinion, uh, just on his play and his leadership out on the floor. Uh, Monty Williams had to take him out in the second half, only played seven minutes in the second half because Chris Paul is one of them players that uh, you got to pull him off the floor. He, he'll go out there and play with one arm, one leg. Uh, he's probably one of the most toughest individuals uh, in the game of basketball, has a lot of Allen Iverson in him when it comes to injuries and playing through it. Uh, so uh, I think it definitely impacts the Phoenix Suns if he's not healthy uh, enough to go out and try to go ahead and lead this team to to a uh, game three victory. Rip, the Dallas Mavericks are now up two games on the Clippers. Now, one would think this would put the Clippers in panic mode. Paul George says, look, we just got to play our game. He said there is no level of concern. But with the way Luka's playing, you're down two games. I mean, there has to be some level of concern here for the Clippers. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's definitely a lot of concern. And, yes, they should be in panic mode because I, I think if Dallas had home court advantage and Dallas won their first two games at home, then, yes, they did their job. Okay. But the Clippers lost two games on their home court. And, yes, you be, should be in panic mode. And the reason why is because coming to this game, uh, they wanted to make Luka Doncic into a score. They wanted him to go out there and, and try to, you know, force him to score the ball and not be able to make plays for other guys on the floor. And he's able to do both. And I, I just feel as though when he's able to do that out on the floor, Dallas is tough to, gu tough to guard. Tim Hardaway Jr. had another great game uh, from, from the perimeter, knocking down wide over shots. All the other guys are playing great at basketball, just staying spaced on the floor, allowing Luka to, to, to operate and bring some of that Luka magic out there. I mean, I, I was very surprised that the Los Angeles Clippers had not one individual that took the challenge on, on locking him up. I mean, the guy scored over 30 points in the first two games. They got to do a better job of really getting up into him, jamming him, not allowing him to dance 
uh, out on the out on the dance floor. He's actually dancing. He's 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 actually watching where the defenders are coming from, the the, the double team, and he's able to get to his spot. You got to speed his game up, not allow him to get to his spot because when he's able to dictate the game, there's not a guy on this planet that can guard him. All right, let's look ahead to tonight. We've got three games coming up, and let's start with the one that is bound to be very entertaining. We get Trey Young and the Hawks up game one, uh, back in the garden going up against the Knicks. Now, he says he is fueled by the hatred and the booze, Christopher, not alcohol, B-O-O-S, thrown his way. What can we expect with this one? Oh, man, listen. He appreciates playing in Madison Square Garden just like any other NBA player that ever played there. Madison Square Garden was my favorite place to, to play, and that's the mecca of basketball. And he came out and showed why he was super excited, especially in the late game, floated shot to, 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 to seal the game. Trey Young has been amazing for this team, but he has to play great for this Atlanta Hawks team to beat this New York Knicks squad. I thought that Julius Randle has to play better if you're if you're a New York Knicks fan. I mean, I thought he rushed a lot on the offense end, uh, didn't allow the game to come to him. But this guy, Trey Young, he did. He went out there and was super aggressive. He allowed his teammates to kind of set him up. And when it was time to close the game, he did that. So uh, this should be a really good game. Uh, can't wait to see it and how it unfolds. But for the Knicks, Julius Randle has to play better for them to get this win. It'll be entertaining regardless. Okay, we've got 76ers Wizards as well. 76ers won 125-118 game one. Tobias Harris putting up 37 points, uh, 28 of them coming in the first half alone. That is the most points in a playoff game and most points and a half by a 76ers player since Allen Iverson. So what do the 76ers need to do again to get this win as well? Well, I think that one, they have to control control the pace and control Russell Westbrook in transition, not allow him to get in transi transition and come down downhill. But the Sixers have done a pretty good job defending him. But you also got to defend Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal had a, a really good game last game. They really got to limit his touches out on the floor. They got to be able to cut the, the, the head off the snake with Bradley Beal and uh, Russell Westbrook. I thought that, A, you know what, the one thing that was working in the 76ers' favor is they didn't let, they didn't worry about Ben Simmons from a scoring standpoint. He only had six points, but a guy that nobody expected to have a really great game offensively, Tobias Harris, who you alluded to, came out and really stroked the ball really, really well. They need him to be the second best scorer for the 76ers behind Joel Embiid because when you got another guy on the perimeter, it takes a lot of pressure of Joel Embiid and, and him to have to score uh, on the block. So I just feel as though if Tobias Harris comes out and has a really good game and Curry really shoots the the the, the blood out the ball from the offense and it just allows Embiid, Embiid to dominate the paint. All right, finally, we have Jazz Grizzlies game two, Memphis with the upset in game one. But tonight, the expected return of Donovan Mitchell. He's fired up. He was upset he wasn't in game one. So what can we expect from him and his Jazz team? First of all, man, I mean, being in a playoff game and, you know, your star player wants to play. Back when I played, if the player wanted to play, he was going to play. And a lot of times it was the training staff or the GM or the president of the ball club that was forcing the player to play. So in this new wave age of basketball, watching a guy like Donovan Mitchell coming out in pregame, getting up shots, telling everybody I'm ready. He got his own trainer and his own medical staff that he works with in the summer that was in Utah that said, hey, you know what? He should be. He, he looks like he's healthy enough to go out and play and for him and for, for the team to pull him out. That was just a little mind boggling. But to have him out there now, uh, hopefully in game two, having the addition of a guy like Dwayne Wade there that's now part of that ownership group that understands what it means to play hurt because D. Wade played in a lot of big games uh, injured and never was healthy, kind of probably took some pressure off the organization to allow Donovan to play. Uh, they really miss him out there. Uh, hopefully he can come out there and give him, give him his all, and hopefully he's 100%. We haven't seen him since April 16th, more than a month, almost a month and a half. Rip Hamilton, I will call you about our outfits tomorrow. I'm thinking purple. We'll see what happens, but thanks so much for joining us. All right, take a look at the games tonight. We just went through them for you. Wizards, 76ers, uh, that is the early one. So we get two kind of early ones. Hawks, Knicks right after that, 730. And then if you are up late, Grizzlies, Jazz, 10 Eastern tip-off.
Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.